when you see a competition basketball court that's supplemented with other teaching spaces and then there's not just the one gym that we have at the high school um, was very exciting. You know, in the, in the end, um, you know, if, if you, you use your imagination a little bit, I mean, you can see it on the paper, but when you, be, when you can use your imagination to think about things that are, that are new and clean, and I'll use the, uh, the Wayne Hardiker phrase, warm, uh, clean, safe, warm, and dry. I mean, those are, those, are, those are Wayne's, you know, that's his mantra. And, you know, we don't always have that. We have clean. I don't know that we have warm and dry as much as we would like. Um, and that's, that's an issue. We talked a little bit about that earlier tonight. So just in a very, you know, kind of a very, uh, in a nutshell, the, the, the possibilities exist with the freshness of the building, the ability to have, um, you know, internet connectivity without mm -hmm. being prohibited by steel and concrete that we currently are now, parts of the building that you can't get on the internet, um, for teachers to have the kinds of technology and to have a building that serves that technology was very exciting. Um, you know, we're a little bit tight in the administrative wing, the guidance counselors, we don't have conference room spaces, you know, we kind of jockey for spaces to have team meetings with parents, to have kind of conferences with, with uh, parents. We don't have those kinds of spaces at the high school, so that was another thing that people got excited about. But in the end, I think, um, you know, I think for, um, for the people that attended that day, and there were a good number, I would say it was a representative group probably of around 40, of the staff and all that took the time to commit and meet with the architects. It was about, um, you know, kind of getting close to, to realizing the vision of what, you know, they've been hearing me talk about periodically at faculty meetings, keeping them updated on the work of the Secondary School Building Committee, start to see what it might look like and uh, more importantly, what it might be able to allow us to do for our students. That in the end was what was most exciting. For us to remain at a level of, of, of uh, competitiveness um, the new building is just going to, to allow us to do that at a, I think at a much higher level and probably at a much greater pace um, than we are in the building that we are in now. We do a good job, I think. I think we do a very good job in the current facility, but my opinion is, you know, having been here nine years now as the principal, is I, I, I'm fearful that it's going to become increasingly difficult to do that given the, the limitations that we have in the current building when students have to deal with a classroom being 60 degrees on Monday morning and it takes an hour and a half to get that fixed, it's unacceptable. And that's just a, a symptom of, I think, a much larger problem with the current buildings. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of my summary overview of, of what happened uh, with the architects last Wednesday at the high school. That's very exciting. It is, it's very exciting. People are very excited. Students are talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I probably I enjoy that a little bit more at the high school level, they're a little bit, maybe, I. Well, maybe not, but I, I think they, they might be a little bit more attuned to what they read on the, in the transcript. They know this project is, is coming, uh, potentially, and they're getting excited about it. I shared something with Mrs. Willis today uh, in an essay that a student wrote as part of a Rotary Youth Leadership application um, that he gave to me this morning, and he cites this project in it. And uh, so they're very aware, and um, I think the excitement for them uh, even though many of them, if not all of them, are going to even realize what the building uh, would, can be for them to attend school in. I think they're excited about what it might mean for the future of this town and maybe a younger brother or sister or two. So um, they're, they're, they're excited as well. It's, it's, it's a nice excitement. There's a, there's a buzz. No pun intended on the uh, Hornet logo. <laughs> but there is a buzz. So. <laughs> no, just quickly I would add that I think that the teachers are the stakeholders. They're the ones that are going to be in the classrooms every single day and to have their voices heard, Brad and his team spent so much undivided attention with each group that came in. And I don't think the teachers are accustomed to, you know, at first I think they were a little hesitant and Brad really took time to draw out their ideas. You know, here's your classroom. How do you think it should look as far as what would be most effective for our students? And I think they were really honored. I mean, frankly, I'm new and I still haven't gotten over the fact that the t teachers in the middle school do not have a telephone in their classrooms. And, and when the teachers heard that they could possibly have a telephone in their classroom, boy, they were thrilled. So, so I, you know, I can't tell you enough how, my, how many teachers have come up to me to say thank you to me, and certainly it wasn't anything that I did, to allow them the opportunity to envision what they think an effective classroom really would look like. And I was an educator for 10 years myself, and no one asked me ever, what do you think a classroom should look like? They know things from where the smart board should go, the bulletin board, 
where doors should be located in terms of being able to access a classroom or not hear classroom from, an, from you know, no, classroom noise. I think also the, the idea of having flexibility in their learning so that if they want to plan, we have some fallout spaces, some breakout spaces on teams so they can take you know, 20 kids out and do some, some different type of, of learning. I, I think just really, really thrilled. And if I could add to what John said, I actually have a 15-year-old son who I shared the Helen's video with, and I couldn't get him away from it. He's a, a freshman. And although he's enjoyed his experience tremendously so far this year, he is a little taken aback at his health class in the garage. He's not, he's, he's not quite used to the fact that teachers, three teachers, I think, share his one room. You know, he said to me the other day, he said, Mommy, do you know that there's a man who sits in my, my uh, US history class and does work while my teacher is teaching because he doesn't have another room to go to? So he's, this is a 15-year-old boy taking it all in and thinking he would love the opportunity to spend his senior year in a brand new facility. So and he's one of you know 200 other freshmen who would echo his words. So I, I think we should tap into them, you know, and get their, their they would uh, be loved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, thank compelling. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Masi? Um, where is the central office space? Is it in the new building? The central office space? Um, it's, it's still <laughs> it's, it's still in the planning. Brad, you, can you because enlighten us? I don't know if you remember there was a... No, I don't know. <laughs> was up there, but the, the way we've set it up with the existing middle school and then the shared core space, the gymnasium, there's a big main street that connects that with the academic portion of the new high school. And there's a separate uh, high school entrance and then there's a separate middle school entrance. And sandwiched right in between those is the kind of shared administrative space. The idea being there that you want to have two separate identities, uh, you know, that students come in and they say, this is my school. At the same time, you know, there is shared elements, but there's separation there from a security perspective because there are going to be different operational times of that. You want to be able to have somebody that can be watching both doors essentially at the same time. So Brad, I think Masi is asking though about the central office. Yeah. And that's oh, what, I think that's what she's asking. Yeah. I know it's not it's yeah. reversible. It is not reimbursed. Okay. So district office. Where we're going to go. Yeah, that's, what that's the district office, yeah. That's a good question. We've been looking at, <laughs> at, a, uh, at Ooh, a, number of, a, a number of different yeah. things, you know, is potentially on site. Uh, there was uh, the LGR uh, is, is an area that we're looking at in terms of potentially locating something there. The current district space requirement is larger than what LGR currently affords. Uh, so, but that is something that we what we worked with the superintendent to get a program for that space, and uh, our office right now is looking at seeing if we might be able to configure something in that area that will still work within the constraints of the site because that's a fairly tight area there, and you know there'll be, need to be a separate entrance and some separate parking and such. Uh, but you know we're hopeful that we can make that area work as a potential option. But it's intended to be within this project. It's it not. Well, it could be located there, could be located perhaps somewhere else on site if we can't make it work. It's not something that's currently reimbursable under the state program. But it, it, it will in all likelihood be on site. Okay. I have suggested to the superintendent that with all the technology, they, she could work from home, but I'm not sure <laughs> that's going to uh, Don't like that idea. That's going to come to fruition. I want to be on site. <laughs> but that is, that is something we are working out. I could add, regardless of it being reimbursable, if we don't put it on the site and build something there, we're going to have to build a building somewhere else or rent space. So rent I, space. I think. I think it's, I don't, as one committee member, I would want it to be part of that building because I think it's, Agreed. even though it's only in the middle school now, I think it's very effective to have the yep. central administration in that, in a school building. No, I think that's the first option yeah. if it works. Yeah. Yeah. If that is, it's LGR. Mm -hmm. Yes, Judge. sufficient, and maybe I'm dating myself, but lockers for all of these kids to have their own lockers for gyms? 
And are we going to lose the batting cages or they're currently in the high school or is, is there going to be something to facilitate, you know, this, the, the athletic program? Because, you know, I, I do believe, you know, that the kids need to be academically challenged, but I'm, I'm also concerned about the physical aspect of it as, as well. well. I think we're all concerned with that. I Coach, Ca that Coach Carey is asked to be sealed in to the batting okay. cages <laughs> below the high school <laughs> and a memorial plaque put up top there. But, oh, um, I, again, I, I think all those things have been taken into consideration. The phys ed space itself is actually going to exceed the space we currently have. And we met with the uh, advocates from uh, youth basketball last week and we showed them how we're going to have two full length basketball courts. As far as lockers, John, I'm not sure how they do it now at the high school, but if you could address that as far sure. as locker space. Yeah, we actually had a pretty significant discussion last Wednesday yeah. with, uh, with Brad, um, when athletic director and curriculum specialist for phys ed. Uh, and uh, we believe, did, uh, did you ask Mr. Luongo, would we have, would every student have a locker in the phys ed area? Yeah, I mean, we're, I don't know the answer to that yet. I don't think we, we, we have not come to a conclusion on whether every student would, um, but I think it's fair to say that the idea would be that there would be a space for students who have phys ed classes to have a space that they could lock their um, belongings up in and also uh, separate spaces for um, the sports program to lock um, their belongings up. Because as you know, sometimes the, you know, an equipment bag, um, in fact, a Mrs. Cro Mrs. Brown brought, actually brought a student's, a girl's lacrosse uh, equipment bag with her as a model to show us you know, this is what needs to fit in some sort of space um, to be locked up. So, um, you know, I think in the end, I think the, the, the most, uh, the best answer I could give to you is that we are, you know, still considering what needs to be made available, but we want to do this right. And so, it, you know, it's, it, it needs to be done right and it needs time to, to develop, you know, exactly how many lockers do we need to serve what is, um, you know, you've been in this town a long time. There are, this is a, a pretty robust athletic program. So we have to balance, you know, what's the educational program during the day um, and what are the needs in the phys ed health area and then Kind of what does is, what is the after school athletic program look like and how do the two come together and how do we make sure that we have the facilities available to serve both? Remember Judge too, not every, not every student's taking phys ed. So that at any given time you wouldn't need a locker for every single student, John, is that right. correct? Right, and the way it currently is now, and I don't see this changing, I see it maybe expanding, is that students have phys ed half the year of a full year class. They have an actual phys ed class, you know, kind of what we would envision as the, the gym based or outdoor space based gym class for half a year and then the other half of the year they're in a classroom, in a health ed classroom, of which there would be two true, two true health education classrooms in the new building, not garages. Um, so that's enough, those are two additional teaching spaces that we would have. So as Mr. Venezia has said, it's not always every student in phys ed. Um, it's usually half the class, half of the freshman class, half the sophomore class, for example. I, you know, I, Judge, I'm right there with you. Well, All our priorities are phys ed, then technology, science, and the rest <laughs> of it. Everything else falls under that. So, uh, could I, I, no, I think, I think we'll make this work. Could I add a point on yes, that? Yes, it's, it's, it's very exciting to know, too, that there are also you know, two other spaces. In addition, in addition to just gym space, there's a multi-purpose room with, uh, you know, for, like I mentioned earlier, for wrestling, for dance, for cheerleading. For any other kind of fitness type classes, it has a specialized floor in the design. And then right adjacent to that, both of these are adjacent to the gym, by the way, um, there is a, a weight training facility. What we would you know, consider to be a, a first class weight training facility to help students you know, take care of their bodies and, and teach them those kinds of skills of the way in which they need to maintain their fitness for you know, kind of the rest of their lives. So. Each of those spaces are about the size of this room. Right. Hmm. Each, then, each of those, those two spaces, spaces. Are about the size of this room. Oh, 2,000? 3,000. 3,000, okay. Yeah. They're pretty significant. And that's in addition to the expanded gym space. Anybody else? Jerry, I had a question. Yes, Mike. Can you guys, can someone expand on that whole double the space of the media lab slash library piece and what the intention of that is? Yeah, Brad, do you want to? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. So uh, we heard earlier that you're doubling the space of the two libraries combined slash media space. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if it's doubled or not, but I know that the, the total area 
is about, uh, I think, 8,400 square feet. And we had uh, 